praise God, and thank you for joining in with us today. I'm Pastor Ray Romero, and you have just tuned in to the Road to Victory television broadcast. I pastor the Evangel World Prayer Center in Elizabethtown. We are located right in the heart of downtown Elizabethtown. Um, there's a number on your screen that any time during this broadcast, if you feel like you want somebody to pray with you or believe God with you about anything, just call the number on the screen and our prayer partners will get your prayer request and they will contact you or they will pray with you right at that moment at that time to believe God with you. Today, we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you out of the Word of God about a message I call a timely word or a word in season. So many times we are searching for God to speak to us. We want a word from God. We need a word from God. But there are so many other things that are in the world that are distracting us. There are jobs, there's family, there's uh, activities with the kids. There's just so many things going on that it's hard to receive a specific or a clear word from God. I want to encourage you today just to take some time, just sit back, relax, and, and, and just meditate on the Word of God. Set some time aside where you can specifically just spend time in the presence of God, where you can read the Word of God, where you can spend time in prayer and believe God with you. I also want to encourage you to go to church. Go to church with other believers. The Bible says not to forsake the assembling of the saints. The Bible says there's a blessing when we come together. There are people there that can connect with you. There are people that can encourage you. There are people that can minister to you. There are people that can believe God with you. So there are things that we must do to hear a word from God or to be in the place to hear from God. I want to share with you today out of Proverbs chapter 25 and in verse 11. And it says this, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pitchers of silver. A word fitly spoken or a word spoken specifically for your situation. A word spoken specifically for the time that you're in right now. A word spoken specifically for what you're going through right now. The Bible says in this scripture, it says it's like golden apples in pitchers of silver. Or one translation says it's like golden apples delivered to you on trays of silver. So here we see two scenarios here. One, the word of God is like golden apples. Well, apples produce nourishment in our bodies, just like the Word of God. The Bible says that the Word of God is health and strength to our body. The symbolization of gold represents financial blessing. The Bible says that Jesus came to give us life and that more abundantly. The abundant life, the life of God, the Zoe kind of life, the God kind of life, the life of more than enough, the life of plenty, the, the life of overflowing, the life where we have all our needs met, all our bills paid, and we still have left over. Amen? And so we see that. But then there's another interesting part to it. It says it is like apples of gold in pitchers of silver are delivered on trays of silver. So you see two precious metals there, gold and silver. One of them represents the word of God and the other one represents the deliverer of the word of God or the one that brings the word of God to you, the one that places it in front of you, the one that comes with the word of God and serves you. You see, we have to be in the right place at the right time to receive the specific word or the timely word, but it has to be delivered by a specific person. Some people might not agree with that. Well, let me tell you this. You're not going to receive the same thing from watching TBN or watching uh, another television station or another broadcast like you will being in person in the place that God has for you. I'm not saying that it can't minister to you. I'm just saying that you're going to receive more from being in the presence of the person that God has for you 
to re release that word into your life. And so we see here that this scripture denotes several things. One, it denotes the word of God. It denotes the person that's presenting the word of God. And it denotes that there is a season, a timing for a specific word for you to receive in your life. Most of us need something specific in our life right now. We need something that's going to minister to me right now. See, the way that we function most of the time, we function out of our needs. What is my need at this moment, at this time? So, much, so many things are going on right now. I can't look two or three months down the road because of everything that I have need of right now. So God wants to release a specific word into your life, a word that's going to change your circumstances, a word that's going to change your environment, a word that's going to change your problems, a word that's going to turn things around for you. And so today, I am sharing with you a fitly word in due season, or a timely word in your season, the season that you're in right now. Matthew chapter 13 and starting in verse 1. And it says this. The same day when Jesus out of the house and he sat by the seaside and great multitudes gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things unto them in parables saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Well, the first thing I want to draw to your attention is that there was multitudes of people following a person to hear what this person had to say. And the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus is the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word is God. And then it goes on to say, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, dwelt amongst men. The word being Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the word of God manifested in the flesh. So when people were following Jesus, they were not actually following Jesus. They were being drawn to the word of God. You see, saints of God, people of God, we are drawn to the word of God because the word of God brings hope. The word of God brings life. The word of God brings encouragement. The word of God brings healing to us. The word of God brings restoration. The word of God in itself, completely within itself, can produce everything that you have need of in your life right now. So the people, the multitude, it says the multitude gathered around Jesus so many that he says, hey, I got to get off a little bit. So he sat on the boat and he began to teach them. He began to speak to them. He began to release a word in season for them. They were there on time, in place, at the right place to receive the word of God. And it goes on to say, and when he sowed some, seed fell by the wayside, and fowls came and devoured them up. And some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them out. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who has an ear to hear, let him hear. So we see that Jesus spoke to them concerning the word of God, but he used it in a way that they could understand. He used it. He spoke about seeds. He spoke about something that they could relate to. He gave them a scenario. He gave them a, a picture. He painted a picture. He says, here the sower went out to sow seeds. But he was actually talking about the word of God. The word of God, timely planted in your life, specifically for the situation that you're going through, will produce a harvest in your life. Let me say that again. The word of God sowed timely at a specific time in your life for a specific situation in your life will produce a harvest of what you're believing God for. 
Again, the word of God has everything that we have need of. I believe that one of the situations or one of the problems that we have, saints of God, is that we don't stand on the word of God like we should. In other words, I'm saying we don't stand on the word of God till I get my breakthrough, till I get my miracle. So many times I've heard people of God say, well, I prayed about it, but it didn't happen, so it must not be God's will. You want God's will, you get in the word of God. There are over 3,000 promises plus in the word of God. Now, I'm sure that some of those promises, one of those promises can fit the situation or the problem that you're going through in your life. All you have to do is find the right one. And I'm telling you, you get a hold of that right one. And you begin to plant that word. You begin to plant that seed of the word of God pertaining to your situation, pertaining to what you're going through. I guarantee you it will produce a harvest in your life. And if you don't get it in the first week, then you continue on. If you don't get it in the second week, you still continue on. In the third week, you don't, con you don't get it, you still continue on. What am I saying to you? I'm saying you don't give up until you get your breakthrough. You don't give up till you get your miracle. You don't give up till you get your healing. You don't give up till you get what the promise of what the word of God says that is due you, that is coming to you. It's yours. It's mine. The Bible says that we have been given precious promises pertaining to life and godliness. Here, these are the promises that we have from God. They pertain to life and godliness. It will help me spiritually, and it will help me physically, in my physical need. Do I need something physically? If I need healing in my body, I need something physically. If I need, have a financial need, I need something physical. I need a place to live. I need a car. I need my rent to be paid, my mortgage to be paid. I need things done. It's for life and godliness. And so we see that the word of God is seed that produces a harvest in our life. And then he goes on to say, we're going to drop down a little bit to verse 18. And it goes on, it says, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. In other words, he's going to explain to them now the parable. He says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches it away or steals it away, that which was sown in his heart. So if you hear the word of the kingdom, now that word kingdom really allows us to know that it's not the word of the world. It's, not, it's, it's a word that's beyond this world. It's another kingdom. It's a kingdom principle. It's a word that God releases for those that are in his kingdom and are believing him. So in other words, if the kingdom of God is higher than the kingdom of this earth, then the kingdom word of God surpasses anything in the natural realm. So if the economy says we're going down, unemployment is up, and you're going to lose your job, but the kingdom of God, the word of the kingdom of God says, hey, I'm going through, I'm getting my financial breakthrough, I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out, everything I touch is blessed, then the supernatural word of the kingdom of God surpasses what the natural world will say. There is great understanding when we get the word of God and we stand on the word of God. And he, then he goes on to say, but he that received, that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that hears the word and with joy receives it. So here the word comes and we receive the word of God and we receive it with joy. He says, yet he has not rooted himself, but endures for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, and by that he is offended. So here we see that the person receives the word of God. He's joyful to receive the word of God. But when tribulation and persecution comes, then he gets offended. But let me tell you something, saints of God. The Bible says in this scripture that tribulation and persecution is going to come because of the word. So the word, so you receive a promise. 
So instantly the enemy comes to attack the word that you receive. But if you stand on the word of God, the word of God will not fail. If you stand and continue to believe the word of God, I'm here to tell you, you will receive the promise. But he said instantly the person got offended. Why did he get offended? Because he said in his heart, well, this doesn't work. This must not be for me. This promise must be for somebody else. Or why is it that it worked for somebody else, but it's not working for me? Let me tell you something. It'll work for you just like it'll work for anybody else. The Bible said that God is not a respecter of person. If he does something for somebody, he'll do it for you too. Why? Because God loves you just as much as he loves the next person. The promise of God is for you just like it is for anybody else. It doesn't change depending on the person. The word of God is still true. Now, we can change that by the way we receive the word of God, or we can re re uh, change it by not having enough depth in our lives to receive the word of God, or we can change that simply by rebellion or being disobedient. But if your life is in line and your life is in check with the word of God, then anything that's promised in the word of God can become yours. It can become yours today. I'm speaking to somebody out there that you have a specific need for this specific time and God has a specific word for you. It's called a word fitly in timing so that you can receive what you have need of. The word of God comes to you. It, the presentation of the word of God is like golden apples. It's like golden apples. brings nourishment brings blessing, brings finances. The word of God contains life, contains everything that you have. Now sometimes we get offended because we don't like the person that's presenting the word of God. Well, we need to get out of that. We need to just focus on, do I need this word? Is this word going to help me? Is this word going to be a blessing to me? I'm speaking to somebody that has a specific need at a specific time, and God has a specific word. And he goes on to say, He also that received the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. So here we have another scenario where he receives the word of God but the deceitfulness of the world chokes out the word of God. The thorns grow up. The cares of this world choke out the word. In other words, I'll pay more attention to what's going on around me than I do the word of God. I care for more of the things of the world than I do the word of God. No, the Bible says this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. First the kingdom. The word of the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the word of the kingdom of God. And he says all these things will be added unto you. You have to seek first the kingdom of God. You have to seek first the word of the kingdom of God. That has to become the priority in your life. That has to become the number one thing in your life. You can't just be flippant and one day... I'm into the word of God and then the next day I'm not. This has to become the way that we live. It has to become a lifestyle to it. It has to become the way that we learn to live to receive all the things that God has for us. A specific word for a specific time. Right now for each and every one of you. It's right here. It's in the word of God. It's what you have need of. Now let me go on here. And, it, and he goes on to say, But he that received the seed into good ground is he that heareth the word, understands it, which is also that beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. He says good ground. Who is good ground? Good ground is the person that receives the word of God and understands the word of God. Understand, the Bible says that the number one thing is to get wisdom. With all your wisdom, get understanding. Understanding the word of God. When I understand the word of God, now the word of God will produce a harvest in my life. Now that I understand what the word of God is able to do, now that I understand that the word of God is a promise, it has promises for me, 
specifically for me as well as everybody else. When I understand that God loves me, when I understand that God wants to bless me, when I understand that God has a plan for me, that God has already chosen me, that God has already called me, when I understand these things, when I understand the word of God, now it begins to produce a harvest in my life. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. He gave us a scenario here in a growth time frame. At first, you'll grow to 30, then you'll grow to 60, and then you'll grow to 100 fold. Well, that becomes with wisdom. Wisdom grows on us. Wisdom we get as we progress and as we grow spiritually in the Word of God. Just like we get wisdom the natural way, just in time. And I say that some of us never get to that point, but, you know, but it, the way it, the, the life is made up, the way things are made up, just as I live and as I grow, I grow in wisdom. Well, with the word of God is the same principle. The more that I study, the more that I receive, the more that I pray, the more that I fellowship, the more that I spend time in the presence of God, then I begin to grow in wisdom. And I begin to grow in wisdom and the word of God begins to richly bless my life in area of my life spiritually emotionally physically the word of God financially the word of God begins to produce a harvest in our life 30 60 and 100 fold you say well 30 might not be that much well let me tell you something if you're not getting a harvest in your life right now 30 can be a tremendous blessing to you amen I'm gonna say that again you say well 30 might not be that much well, let me say this to you one more time. If you're not receiving a harvest in your life at all right now, 30 can be a tremendous blessing. Amen. So I'm talking about a timely word, a specific word, a word in due season for your situation. Now, I'm going to take you to one more scripture. It's found in the book of Luke and in verse 19. And it says this. And it says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, and when he was, and who he was, and he could not for the press, because he was of little stature. He was a small man. But he desired to see Jesus. He desired to see who he was. Here you have a man that's desiring to see the word of God. You have a man that's desiring to see Jesus. You have a man that has a, a, a want, that has a need in his life. And he wants to see Jesus. And the Bible says that he, and, and it goes on and it says, And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide in your house. And it goes on to say, I'm going to drop down to verse 9, and it says, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as also is as he is also the son of Abraham. So here we see Jesus coming to a place where there was a man waiting for him, a man that had a need. And it might not seem that he knew that he even had a need at that time, but he did have a need. He had a need of salvation coming to his household. He had a need of salvation coming to his family. Somebody out there might say, well, you know what, Pastor? I'm doing well. I got a good job. I'm healthy, I'm strong, my family is doing good. But let me tell you something. Just because you don't see it right now doesn't mean that you don't have a need. Doesn't mean that something's not going to rise up here in the very near future. And I'm not trying to curse anybody and I'm not trying to speak anything bad over everybody. I'm just trying to say that, hey, you never know when something is going to arise and you're going to have a need. Well, why not get ahead of the program right now? See, he didn't know that he had a need, but Zacchaeus knew one thing. He says, I want to see this man, and I want to get to know him 
But because of everything else that's going on around me, because of all the people, because of every, all the press and all the things that are going on around me, I'm not going to be able to. So I have to get to a place where I can position myself for a proper time, a specific time, a specific season for a specific need. And so Zacchaeus runs ahead before all the crowd and he finds a place. He says, hey, I'm a grown man, but I'm going to climb this tree and I'm going to wait to see Jesus. You could put it this way. Zacchaeus climbed out on a limb to receive what he had need of. Are you climbing out on a limb? You say, well, what do you mean by climbing out on a limb? I'm saying, are you stepping out in faith? Are you believing God? Are you getting out there? Are you doing the things that you need to do? Are you being positioning yourself to receive what God has for you? Are you arriving in that situation ahead of time so that when the word of God, when the blessing of God arrives, there you are to receive it? Are you getting ahead of the program? You say, Pastor, how do I get ahead of the program? Well, I'm here to tell you. By reading, by studying, by listening to the Word of God, by fellowshipping with the saints of God, by getting with other people that believe the same way we believe. I can't hang around people that have doubt and unbelief, and I'm trying to live in faith. I'm trying to believe God, but yet again, I'm hanging around people that don't have no faith. I'm hanging around people that are just doom and gloom. I'm hanging around people people that nothing ever good happens for them. I can't hang around those people and you can't hang around them either. You begin to hang around them, you're going to become just like them. No, you get around people of faith. You get ahead of the program. You get ahead. Just like Zacchaeus ran ahead. He climbed the tree, went out on a limb and says, hey, I have to see this man. And it paid off for him because there arrives the word of God. There arrives the blessing of God and says, Zacchaeus, Hurry up and come on down from there. Today, I'm going to your house. Today, I'm going to your house. I believe that today, the word of God, the blessing of God is arriving at your place. I believe that it's arriving right there at this specific time, at this specific season for your specific need. I believe that. I believe that this is your time. I believe that this is your season. A word fitly spoken is like golden apples in silver pitchers. A word fitly spoken, a on-time word, a word that will begin to change your life, a word that will begin to change your situation. A on-time word, a specific word for a specific time for a specific uh, season will begin to bless you. Now, I'm getting ready to close. But if you want a copy of this message, call the number on your screen. If you need any of us to agree with you in prayer about anything, call the number of your, on the screen. If you want more information as to where we are and where we're located, call the number of your screen. I am Pastor Ray Romero. I pastor the Evangel World Prayer Center in Elizabethtown. And you have tuned in to the Road to Victory television broadcast. Because I believe that we are on the road to victory. Great things are going to happen for you today. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.